What, what do we know about the possibility that these local villagers betrayed the American forces that were there to, to help them? Jake, a defense official tells us, in his words, it's very probable that someone or some group of people in that village tipped off ISIS to the presence of U.S. forces there. In fact, from the very early after-action reports from survivors of the ambush, they expressed uh, suspicion that they had been delayed in that village to, uh, and then tipped off to allow for the ambush to take place. Another in indicator is this, that when they did go into that ambush, it, it was a pretty elaborate setup. There, there were heavy machine guns, there were RPGs, there were mortars. That requires some time, some setup, presumably some planning, which adds to the sense that they were tipped off to their presence there. David McKenzie, you're on the ground there uh, in uh, Niamey, Niger, not far from where the attack took place. It's an area that's become, uh, we're told, a, a hotbed of Islamic terrorist activity. How big a challenge has this been for Nigerian and American forces? Well, it's a big challenge for the Nigerians, and certainly that's one of the reasons why there are American soldiers on the ground here. Just a few hours from where I'm standing is where that deadly ambush took place, Jake. And that is an area on the border of Mali where you have these very fluid militant groups moving in and out across the borders, engaging in these kind of attacks. So one, one of the big questions right now, Jake, is whether there was some kind of intelligence failure that sent these American soldiers into harm's way on what was supposed to be a routine mission, which uh, was seen to have not a very high level of threat against these soldiers, and as Jim described, they ended up in a massive firefight. Jim, right? well, Jim what, what more are you learning about the nature of this mission to gather intelligence on a high-value ISIS terrorist in the region? These teams go, all, go, go out all the time to survey the scene, often to meet with, with local leaders, village elders, etc. On this particular trip, they were asked to stop in an encampment where it was believed that an, a known ISIS leader had been, had been before, not at that moment, but had been before, to see what intelligence they could gather. We've been told explicitly they were not sent on a, message to ki uh, a mission to kill or capture that ISIS leader. Part, he, he wasn't there, but, but also this is not the team that would do it. Do it. it was not uh, a team either equipped to or backed up with the resources, including air cover, necessary to carry out such a mission. And David, the head of African Command, U.S. Forces, is, is calling for more resources in the region? Well, that's right. In fact, that happened like six months ago, Jake. The head of the Africa Command speaking to the Senate Armed Services Committee saying that they're under-resourced, that many of the missions they want to complete, they couldn't because of that lack of resources. And perhaps critically uh, saying that they didn't have the recovery, uh, uh, search and recovery missions in-house, that they had to contract that. So did he really raise the alarm bells? But one thing worth pointing out, this mission here by the Americans has been here for a long time, more than 10 years. In fact, CNN was invited here just recently to look at the drone base. This is not some secret mission uh, working in the shadows. It's very much above board and uh, very significant working out of Niger to mitigate the terror threat in neighboring countries. And it's seen as a key buffer zone towards stopping these relatively small militant groups from expanding and developing a footprint.